Welcome back. A new era of digital payments is needed to unlock the global economy for more than 1.7 billion unbanked people worldwide. Electronium says it has developed a revolutionary new digital payments ecosystem that allows anyone to store, send, and receive digital funds via their smartphone. No bank account required. Now with me is the CEO Richard Ells to explain how all of this works. Welcome, Richard. Great to have you. Hi, Jane. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me on. Much appreciated. So your mobile-based payment solution is powered by ETN. So explain what that is and why that is important. Uh, okay, so uh, lots of people would have heard about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and, uh, and lots of things, but uh, most of those cryptocurrencies are just being used by speculators uh, largely. They're not, they're not really in real-world use or not mass real-world use. But we saw cryptocurrency as a way to genuinely solve a real-world problem, which is, uh, as you've said at the beginning, 1.7 billion people on the planet don't have access to banking, uh, and it makes it very difficult for them to uh, to take part in the global digital uh, revolution that's taken place. You know, the, the world is a very different place to how it used to be, but they uh, have been left behind. So we thought, can we unlock this with a, with a cryptocurrency that's tailor made to work on smartphones? And uh, uh, and we think most assuredly the answer is yes. Okay, so somebody can take a smartphone, which they will have a digital wallet on there, and they can use that to purchase everyday items, like bread or coffee? Yeah, and we've already got that working. Uh, so we always start out with the uh, with uh, digital airtime and data. So we start with a cell phone operator and, uh, and work out a deal with them to enable people to buy airtime and data directly with ETN, uh, and then work on the ground from that point on to uh, enable other people uh, to accept ETN um, to, for exactly that, everyday staples, et cetera. And an important okay. part of it is that uh, we have some other software that's literally launching uh, this, this quarter, which enables people to, to learn a new digital skill and list that digital skill for sale uh, into the developed world. So that sort of joins okay. the economies together. Well, that is really interesting. I want to talk to you about that in just a second. So, oh, but, so, so ETN, and just so I understand, is your digital currency and that is what people will use to make these everyday transactions. That's correct, yeah, and it's very, very simple. Uh, it's instant, so uh, it's, uh, uh, it's much like using uh, Apple Pay or something al uh, along those lines in terms of its feel. Uh, the the back-end technology is very different, but of course the end user doesn't really care too much what happens at the back-end. All they care is that a value has been transferred from one person to another really, really uh, simply and instantaneously. Awesome. Okay, so your blockchain network is run by NGOs, non-government organizations. So that is where the unbank comes into this, and how does that make your currency different? Uh, well, once again, uh, we're quite different in that regard. Uh, lots of uh, cryptocurrencies, most of them actually, are, are powered by something called proof of work. It means lots and lots of really high power computers churning away, burning through electricity uh, to, to maintain them. Uh, we didn't really like the idea of that. It's not uh, particularly environmentally friendly. In fact, it's hideous environmentally. So uh, we have gone down the route of having trusted authorities, these NGOs that run our blockchain for us. And at the same time, uh, they also uh, happen to be on the ground in the exact places that we're looking uh, to, to be in. Well, and in a world where there's people are confused about cryptocurrencies, having an NGO-backed one gives you more credibility, uh, more trustworthiness. I can see yeah, that. Indeed, yeah. On the ground, exactly that. Uh, it helps us a great deal if, if somebody that's been around for years and years and years says, actually, these guys are, are legitimate. There's an awful lot of scams in the cryptocurrency space still. It's a bit like the Wild West still. So uh, once we get through all of that, uh, you know, I think cryptocurrency is going to change the world. But somebody has to be out there leading that and making it happen. Now, let's go back to that software um, issue that you brought up earlier about how you're, in addition, teaching people some technical skills. Did I understand that right? That is uh, an e-learning platform, again, based entirely around smartphones. Uh, it's backed by us and it's backed by NGOs. So it's, it, there'll be no cost. So you can learn a new skill. And that may be something extremely simple to start with, uh, uh, could be creating uh, social media videos uh, by, by okay. moving uh, twigs and leaves around, or, or it could be much, much more advanced creating HTML pages or whatever. But those skills can be learned one little tiny piece at a time, and those skills can be sold on, on the other website. Absolutely. Now, how do you feel about regulation of cryptocurrencies? I know a lot of governments are wrestling with this right now, Various countries are in all kinds of different stages about this. 
What's your take on regulation? Uh, you know, um, we embrace uh, regulation. We, we, right, right, we were the first cryptocurrency that embraced KYC AML, which I'm mm -hmm. sure your viewers would be aware of what yep. those are. Know your customer and anti-money laundering. So we embrace that European Fifth Directive of AML. And we, we really embrace regulation because we see that the marketplace needs more of it, not less of it. I understand there is a need for fully decentralized, completely unregulated cryptocurrencies in the space where there is oppressive regimes. But actually, largely, uh, um, governments are, are not that way. Most, most governments of the world are there for the people and to protect the people. Okay, thank you so much, Sia Richard, and best of luck to you. And I just think it's fascinating how digital currencies are changing the world. I mean, this world could look very different in another generation based on it, all this. It absolutely will, yeah. Thank you very much. I really thank appreciate you. your time.